All you need to do for this warm-up is add the values together. I don't think you necessarily need me to show you an example. You just might need to spend some time on this slide. So go ahead and pause so you have time to finish your warm-up. For problem one through six, fill in the blanks and make a true number sentence. If I add 12 and negative 12 together, that's like going right on my number line and immediately backwards. So I'm going to stick with zero where I start. Negative six plus what number makes zero? That would be positive 56. We have to add opposites to get zero. So if I have negative 33, the opposite is positive 33. If I have positive four, the opposite would be negative four. Negative 12.2. Negative one half plus a positive one half gives me zero. Here I have a number line, and in the first problem we had 12 plus negative 12. So 12, and then we start where we ended, plus negative 12 gives us 0. Those are called additive inverses. If you add something, with its additive inverse, it gets you back to zero. So 12 and negative 12 are considered additive inverses. What do you think would happen if we added 12 plus negative 13? This arrow would be longer, so we would end up at a negative value because the negative arrow is longer than the positive arrow and we would end up at negative one. 12 and negative 13 are not additive inverses because they do not result in zero. Number seven, you have $54 in your bank account. Then you buy a game for 30. What integer represents the change in the balance of your bank account? If you buy a game, is your balance increasing or decreasing? You spent money, so that is a negative 30. An integer are just positive and negative whole numbers. Then write an addition expression that represents the balance of your account after you buy the game. You started with 54, but now you've decreased it by 30. You might be tempted to write this, but it does specify that you need an addition expression. So we need a plus and a negative integer rather than subtracting a positive integer. In part C, what is your balance of your account after you buy the game? Evaluate your expression from part B. If I went 54 in the positive direction and back 30, that would leave me at 24. For problems 8 through 15, evaluate by using any strategy. 2 plus 6 is 8. If I have negative 2 plus negative 6, I went back 2 and back 6 more. So that's going to put me at negative 8. 73 plus 41. That would leave me with 114. If I had negative 73 and negative 41, that would be the opposite, or negative 114. 
with this one, if I go 2 in the positive and 6 towards the negatives, part of this is going to undo itself. You could also think of it as two positives and six negatives. These, a positive and a negative, make zero, so I'm left with four negatives. This one, the six, is four longer than the arrow for negative two, so this one will result in a positive four because the six is positive. In this one, which of these arrows will be longer? The 73, so we know our answer is going to be positive. 73 of them will be positive tiles, and 41 of them will be negative tiles. So if we eliminate the ones that will create zero, that will leave us with positive 32. Oops. But in this one, the negative will be the longer arrow, so we'll have negative 32. What patterns do you notice? I noticed that when they were both positive, I got a positive answer, and when they were both negative, I got a negative answer. But when they had opposite signs, I had to look at which one would be longer or which one has the greater absolute value to determine if it would be negative or positive. During a four-day tournament, golfer scores are recorded each day. Scores are recorded as strokes over par, which would be positive, and under par, which would be negative, or at par for zero points. The golfer's total score is calculated by finding the sum of their scores from the four days. A golfer's daily scores are shown in the table. What is the golfer's total score? So if I had my number line, I would go backwards 4, backwards 2, and backwards 3. That would be 4, 2, and 3 make a total of going backwards 9. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then, for this one, we would go forward one for a total score of eight backwards, or negative eight. For problems 18 through 20, evaluate. I'm going to combine the ones that have the same sign first. So I have negative 6 and negative 7. That would give you 11 because 6, no, 13. <laughs> 6 plus 6 is 12 plus 7 is 13, or plus one more for the 7 makes 13. So we have 11 plus negative 13. 13 is longer than 11 or has a higher absolute value, so our final answer is going to be negative. And the difference between 11 and 13 is 2. For these, we're going to combine the ones that have the same sign. 10 and 8 are both positive, so I have negative 24 plus 18. Which of those has a greater absolute value? 24 would be the longer one, so our sign has to be negative. This is going to go backwards 24, and this will go forwards 18. So what's the difference, or what's left over? 
to get from 18 to 24. That's a change of 6. All right, let's combine the ones that have the same signs here. 5 and 33 makes 38 plus 67. The 67 has the longer arrow or the greater absolute value, so our answer for this one will be positive. But the difference between 67 and 38 will show us how much is left when we go back and forth on that arrow. 17 minus 8 is 9. 5 minus 3 is 2. So 29, and it is positive. Remember I told you a couple lessons ago that we were going to come back to estimating the average temperature in War Road International Memorial Airport. Now that we have some experience working with positives and negatives, we're going to actually find the average. I'm going to start by combining all of the negatives together. Negative 4 and negative 16 is negative 20. 22 and 5 makes negative 27. For a total amount of negative 47 for the negatives. 17 and 15 and 0 combine together to make 32. So I have negative 47 plus 32. The negative has a greater absolute value, so our answer will be negative. And the difference between these two arrow lengths is 15. But that was split up over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 days. So negative 15 divided by 7 is going to be our average temperature for this week at the airport. Now, this is going to come out to a funky decimal, so we are going to round. I'm going to round to the hundredths place. So this is negative 2.142. This is not a 5 or higher, so we keep the values in front of it. So this is approximately negative 2.14 degrees Fahrenheit as the average temperature. Please make sure your warm-up is complete and your workbook is filled in. Have a good rest of your day.